Hold on, Caro, hold on. Tony! Ah! So many Shambas to shape. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Ta 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 ta. Ta ra ba ba ta ra ba ba ta ra. Na 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 na. Ta ta ta. Biri 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 para. Supposed to be like that. No, no. Look. I wonder what I shamba. Hello, this is Aishamba. How can I help you? My name is George, uh, George Kangete. I had an issue with my avocados and I thought we could be of help. Sorry to hear that. What are some of the signs? My plant has got these symptoms. The leaves are falling off. They start by changing their color from green to yellow and then they fall off. And then the stem themselves, they start drying off just from the tip of the head going downwards. It sounds like your trees have phytophthora, commonly known as root rot disease. What? Phytophthora. It's a common problem for avocado trees in Kenya. Meet Kangede, a 29-year-old farmer in Makuyu, Muranga County. Before, I started farming on my own. I've been mostly employed on other farms. Through being employed, I felt like farming is giving. I thought of working for myself and also employ other people to work for me. He has leased this little shamba where he grows cabbages, tomatoes, skuma, spinach, maize and avocados. He has started small but has big plans. In five years I just don't want to be where I am right now today. I want to be in a place whereby I've increased my production and instead of just planting avocado in such a simple area, I enlarge my farm. I want to make more. His beloved avocado trees seem to be suffering from a disease. You know, we've been sneaking around Aishamba trying to find out what problems farmers are facing. Oh yes, and we've heard from one farmer that is having a huge challenge with his avocados and he wants to go very big with them. So we dug and found out that the problem they are facing is very common in Kenya. Ah yes, it's a disease called fight. Fight of Thora. Fight of Thora. Let's call it root rot. Okay. And so we invited Dr. Ruth from Calro to come and tell us more about the disease. Ah, here she is. Doc. Ah, and Kangebe is also here, right Kangebe. on time. Yeah. How Hello. are you? Hello. So straight to it, Kangebe. Yes. What is ailing your avocados? I've got this issue right now with my avocados drying up. It has made me feel like to quit this thing. Because actually after approaching, I found the root were kind of rotting. Isn't that the root rot, doctor? That is most likely phytophthora root rot. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Caro, uh -huh. yes. shall we go have a look at the avocado trees? Oh yeah, that will be fine, but wait a minute. I think I know someone who knows everything about avocados. Let me go get her and see what she can also help us understand. Excellent idea. Is that idea. okay? All right. All right, okay. I'll see you later. See you later, Caro. Okay. Okay, let's go okay. have a look at the trees. This orchard has over 200 avocado trees, with the better half dying. Even though Kangede irrigates his shamba, there are few avocados to spot on his trees. What has been going on? What is this? Yes. What, what kind of a disease is this? This problem you are having here is caused by a pathogen called Phytophthora. A pathogen is? What causes the disease is <laughs> what we call a pathogen. How does it damage the avocado tree? It actually causes rotting of the roots. What happens is that the fine roots are affected and they start rotting. The problem spreads into the bigger roots of the plant, causing rotting of the entire root system. And when this happens, the plant is not able to take up water. The first symptoms you will see is that the tips of the plant 
start drying up towards yeah. the, the bigger stems. The other symptom you see also is the loss of leaves. And once the plant starts losing the leaves and dying back, the plant becomes stunted. And when you uproot the roots of the affected tree, you'll be able to see that they, they are rotten. Uh -huh. yeah. So now, George, yes. when you saw that in your avocados, what did you do? At first, I thought, maybe I'm not doing the irrigation the right way. So you added more water? I added more water. Yes. Sometimes I did the mulching, just trying to help the tree maybe survive. But it didn't work. When can I know that my plants are now affected with this disease? It is important that you scout through your farm and check the individual trees. Yeah. Once you see the twig die back, you see the yellowy, reduced leaves, yeah. that tells you there is a problem. At what age will I know the plant is affected? If you brought in seedlings from a source that is not reliable, seedlings are already infected. Yeah. You could see this problem from as early as one year. It all depends on the rate at which the roots are rotting. Hmm. Does that make sense? Let's break it down for you. The Phytophthora disease lives in the soil. It starts eating the small roots. At this point, the tree still looks healthy, but slowly the old leaves start to wilt and over time turns light green. As the roots stop working, the tree drops its leaves, followed by the branches dying back. Eventually, the whole tree is dead. The avocado fruits might look okay at first, but as the tree dies back, your harvest will go down and the quality will get worse until you stop getting fruit altogether. So it sounds so dangerous. Mm. How bad is it here in Kenya? The problem is really bad. It is widespread in all areas where avocado is grown, not just in Kenya, but worldwide. A farmer can actually lose the entire orchard if measures are not put in place in good time. How is this disease spread? This disease can be spread through infected planting materials. Secondly, it can also be spread through irrigation water, even through surface water. When there is rain, the soil that has the, the phytophthora onto a plant that was disease-free, then it can spread from one tree to another. It can also be spread through tools that you use. If you use tools on one plant that is affected and go and use the same tool on a plant that is clean, it will get affected. To prevent the disease from spreading, Disinfect your tools as you move from one tree to the next, as wherever the soil is moved, the disease can be moved with it. Now my, my plant is already affected. How can I control the plant? You need to scout through your farm so that you are able to detect the problem early. Timely management is very important yeah. before the disease spreads to so many trees in your orchard. Once you see uh, the very initial symptoms. One of these options is to enhance the drainage of your trees. Make sure that uh, the water is seeps through and does not stand around the root region. The second thing you can be able to do is to use a lot of manure, which increases some nutrients like calcium and uh, magnesium. It makes it unfavorable for the phytophthora. But farmers, remember that these will only slow down the disease. The best way to avoid this deadly disease is by getting Phytophthora free seedlings. As Ruth went on to explain, if the tree is dead, it's best to uproot and burn it. Then find a part of your shamba away from here to plant disease free seedlings. Okay. Yeah. So, Ruth, what would you advise farmers to do? So, your farm could be clean. But depending on where you go to get your planting material, you could actually bring in materials that are affected with phytophthora to your clean farm. So a farmer can bring the disease from the nursery to the shamba? Yes. So first and foremost, the farmer has to make sure that they get their seedlings from nurseries that observe high health standards. Yes. The ones that ensure that the materials they are using are disease-free, are pathogen-free. So, Ruth, 
How can we find out more about nurseries? Uh, Kangede, I've called um, somebody from HCD and uh, she deals a lot with nurseries and she will be able to give you that information. Sure. All right, let's go. Let's go. All right, thank you so much, Ruth. <laughs> Carol, we've covered several topics today, but how can our farmers get more information? Simple. Aishamba. What is Aishamba? Aishamba is Shamba Shape Up's call center where a farmer calls and finds experts who are going to help them understand everything agriculture. Exactly. How can they join? Simple. Call 0711-082-606. It's best to get seedlings free from Phytophthora. The Horticultural Crops Directorate, HCD, regulate fruit tree nurseries in Kenya. Sarah Ndegwa is a horticultural officer from HCD and is here to tell us more. We have a mandate to regulate uh, nurseries. So we inspect fruit tree nurseries and uh, we assist to bring up to the right standard clean seedlings. So Sarah, what do you look out for when you visit a nursery? I look at uh, the sighting of the nursery. Is it uh, far from the older crop because of disease transmission from the, the older trees? Uh, the security, there's a regulated way of uh, coming in so that uh, you can even have a foot bath so that you can disinfect so that the seedlings remain healthy. One of the things that I look for is where you do your preparation for the mixture. It's called the potting mixture. This is the mixtures that you put in the paper. It is important that the nurseries steam the potting mix at 70 degrees Celsius for 20 to 30 minutes in order to kill disease in the soil. Farmers, check that the nursery that you are buying your seedlings from has this method in place. Existing nursery health standards in Kenya generally do cover key elements of a high health nursery, but are not specific to types of diseases. Going forward, we hope this will be put in place. This will help nursery operators show they are certified to sell Phytophthora free seedlings and can therefore sell their good quality Phytophthora free seedlings at a better price. Get in touch with iShamba for advice on where you can get Phytophthora free nursery at the moment. Uh -huh. George, yes. now you know what to check out for. Yeah, thank you for the help. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect heavy rainfall across most parts of the country. North, Upper and Lower Eastern will see little to high daily rains in the coming week. This covers Mandera, Garissa, Isiolo and Meru, Taraka, Tukitui, Makweni and Kajado. Total rains across the week here will be between 5 to as high as 385 millimeters in these regions. Most of the coastal region, including Tana River, Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa, Kwale, Taita, Taveta, will get moderate levels of rain ranging between 25 to 50 millimeters of rains across the week. The one exception is Kwale County, which will receive very high levels of rain ranging between 50 and 385 millimeters of rain. Central Kenya, including Laikipia, Nyandarwa, Nyeri, Moranga and Kirinyaga, as well as Nairobi and Kiambu counties, will receive high levels of rains ranging between 75 to 385 millimeters. The North, Central and South Rift Valley will also see good amounts of rains in the coming week. This includes counties such as Trukana, Transoia, Wasingishu, Samburu, Kericho, Nakuru and Narok, with total rains of between 75 to 385 millimeters. The western as well as Nyanza region, including Busia, Bungoma, Kakamega, Vihiga, Siaya, Kisumu, Homa Bay, Nyamira, Kisi, and Migori counties also expect high levels of rains from 75 to 385 millimeters across the week. Farmers prune your fruit trees now to remove the disease and dead branches. This way, they will get more light and grow bigger with healthier fruits. Deworm your animals using recommended dewormers as rains and fresh grass brings parasites such as worms. Remove weeds from the farm as soon as they appear. Weeds take up food, water, space and light meant for your crop. Use recommended selective herbicides or slash them with a panga. For more detailed focus for your area, get in touch with iShamba on 0711-082-606. I am Brenda. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. After the break, 
we learn all about making a good nursery. Also, the best way of planting avocado seedlings. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are learning all about a deadly avocado disease. And how you can stop it from getting onto your farm. Is it just me or is it really hard to say the name of this disease? Pathophthora. Phytophthora. Phyto, 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 phytophthora. Ah, it's not just me. Oh, dear Tony, Phytophthora, you'll get there. Do you remember our good friend Bridget, the expert on everything avocado? Planting, pruning, harvesting? Well, looks like she's also a fundi on managing a Phytophthora free nursery. And we are so lucky that she's got a video on how to do exactly that. Let me send the video to Tony. I wonder where Caro is. Hey, George. Hey. I've got a message from Caro. She's on her way back. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, she has said she sent us a video <coughs> uh, which will show us how to make a nursery. How to construct a low cost Phytophthora free nursery. The finished nursery is made up of two parts. We have the soil shade, where the potting mix is prepared and treated to make sure it's disease free. And we have the plant nursery. This is where the potting happens and the seedlings are raised, grafted and grown for sale. It all starts with the construction of the nursery. For the plant nursery, Dig and level the ground where you'll set up the nursery. Next, create a rock base at least one foot off the ground and fill it up with gravel. This will make sure that the nursery is not diseased with soil from underneath. Finally, create a metal frame and fix a shade cloth across it to keep the seedlings protected from harsh weather. The shed cloth must come right down to the ground to stop people and animals from entering. Now, construct a simple soil shed that's connected to the nursery. This will include an area for putting together the potting mix made up of soil, sand and manure. You also need to set up a method for steaming the potting mix to get rid of the disease that lives in the soil. This can be a proper boiler or a simple two-drum steamer like this one. Make sure the finished nursery has one entrance at the soil shed and one exit at the bottom of the nursery where the plants are taken out. As we saw, the red zone here is where untreated soil comes in and then steamed to kill diseases in the soil. You then pass through a foot bath and enter the green zone. Only steamed soil is allowed into the green zone and only trained staff can enter here. This ensures that all materials taken into the green zone are disease free. The avocado seedlings ready to be sold are then taken out at the end of the green zone. It's a good idea to plant fast growing grasses such as napier along the outside of the nursery so that soil from outside doesn't splash into the nursery as it will carry diseases. Huh. What do you think of that? That's good. Yes. Sure. And how do we kill the disease? I think it's time for another video. Operation of a Phytophthora free nursery. It's really important that you manage your nursery well so that seedlings are sure to be Phytophthora free. There are five key steps to this. Number one, steaming the potting mix. This is a boiler. You can use charcoal, you can use firewood so that one gets the steam, which goes to pasteurize the soil. Your potting mix needs to be steamed at at least 70 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes in order to kill the Phytophthora in the soil. 
The cheapest method is to use a simple drum steamer like this, made out of two old 44-gallon steel drums. Here, we have two sets. But be careful, as the steel can be quite thin and will need to be replaced once a year. The safer option is to install a well-constructed boiler with a pressure gauge and a safety valve like this one. Number two. Potting and planting. A good system is to ensure that the soil steamed in the red zone can be taken out in the green zone through a separate opening like this. You can now use this treated soil to fill up the potting bags and plant the seeds. These will grow into what we call a root stock. Here we have used the Puebla variety. As your plants germinate, sort them so that you can graft plants of similar sizes at the same time. Number three, grafting and after grafting care. Now, here is how to graft. Tape an implant from a mature, healthy avocado tree onto a rootstock, like this. The implant is also called scion. The new plant will be the same as the mother tree, which the scion came from. A popular export variety in Kenya is the Haas variety. Given good management, these grafted plants will start giving you fruit two years from planting. Unlike when you plant when you don't graft, which takes about seven years. Make sure to remove the grafting tips after four to six weeks to stop plants from being strangled. Trim off any side shoots to keep a single stem and water carefully to prevent the seedling dying from too little water or becoming waterlogged from too much. Check your plants for pests and diseases daily. Number four, dispatch your plants. The avocado seedlings are normally ready to transplant three months from grafting. Do not keep them any longer, as plants will become root-bound in the pot and will not do as well. Harden off your plants by keeping them in an unshaded part of the nursery for about a week before being sold. Make sure to release the seedlings at the bottom end of the plant nursery so they do not get in touch with Phytophthora in the red zone. And number five, confirm plants are free from Phytophthora. Take a very small random sample from your batch of seedlings and test it to make sure that they are free from Phytophthora. What do you think? It's good. Yeah? Yeah. Wonderful. Hey, good how's it going? Oh, oh. Wow. We are back. Bridget, yes. <laughs> is it really you? Are? We, we were just watching just her watching here. from the wow, video. that's nice. Can yeah. we rewind? We see her no, again. No, 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 no. Now, now she's here in person. So, Kangede, meet yes. Bridget. Bridget, meet our farmer, Kangede. Wow, pleasure to meet you, Kangede. Oh, yes. Nice. So, have you watched the videos? Yeah. Any question? Yeah, I've got one for mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Now, since I've got a good seedling, mm -hmm. how do I go about it? We have a surplus for you. So, you have to follow oh, us. For sure. Let's go. C can I come? No. no. <laughs> you stay here and watch the videos. Well, but Bridget, I can't believe I was just watching <laughs> you. You're right here. Later. This is, this is nice. This is... Before we get to our surprise, Kangede needs to dip his feet in a foot bath to make sure he doesn't carry any soil from the deceased trees. And here is the surprise. Bridget's brought some grafted disease-free seedlings, all ready to plant. So Bridget and Kangede, we're finally here, so it's time to plant. Are you ready? Yes, yeah, sure. we are ready. Any question, Kangede? Yeah, I would like to know from Bridget mm. the best way for planting. Okay, the first thing, you just select uh, where you want to plant your seedlings. If you find it, you just come and do two by two. The topsoil, you keep it aside, and the subsoil, you keep it the other side. The topsoil is the one which you are going to mix with the well decomposed manure. Then you fill the all again. Then from there, you look at the size of the potting bag of the seedlings. Then you use your arms, you dig the all, then you plant, then later you water. And, and, and another question, Bridget. Mm -hmm. I've seen it's organic manure. Yeah. Can you use fertilizer? Yes, you can use. You can be a confessional farmer or you can be an organic farmer. What I usually emphasize is on organic farming because for the fruits, you get a lot of money more than the confessional ones. So now you are going to use on an organic way. Let's do this. 
Dig a hole two feet wide by two feet deep. Separate the topsoil from the bottom soil. Mix the topsoil with well decomposed manure. Then add the soil mix back into the hole. Once the hole is full, make a small space for the seedling and place it in the hole. Farm in some soil around the sides and there you go. So Bridget, mm -hmm. now that we've planted it, mm -hmm. how much water does it need now? Because it's very dry, we are going to use like 20 liters of water. 20 liters, yes. So Bridget, mm -hmm. how much water do I need to water the, the seedling? For the young seed like now we are planted, you need five liters three times a week. That's it? Yeah, that's it. We're done? Yes. The Shamba Shepherd visiting me, I'm feeling good about it. Because I've been able to learn so much from them. They came in with someone who helped me understand more about the disease. The Phytophthora, which has been pain for me in my family. It's the best platform for farmers to learn more about the things they don't know. I was, I, I was just uh, <coughs> inspecting them. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it's okay, it's okay. Yes. Did, you, did you enjoy the ship up? Yeah, I've enjoyed it the fullest. Yes. Thank yeah. you so, so much. And are you happy? I'm more than happy. <laughs> yes, kindly allow us to go to other farmers to visit, okay? Before we go, one more time, let me just say something, okay? What do you want to say? Fight off Thora! Ah. Oh. <laughs> Fight of Thora! Bye!